Quick uh, revision video for decision trees. I did a decision tree example in my paper two preparation video and I had a few people ask me what the answers were. So I thought if I just did a quick video just to sort of summarize how to calculate the answers. Um, so hopefully it won't be a very long one. If you hear some weird noises in the background, it's because I'm in my conservatory and there's a cat that likes to sit on the top. So um, if you hear any like thuds, that's probably what that is. So decision trees is theme three. Um, it's actually 3.3.3, so it's one of our decision-making techniques. And what it gives you in the specification in terms of what you should be covering and what you should know is you should know how to construct and interpret a simple decision tree diagram. The calculations and the interpretations of the figures generated by these techniques, so being able to understand what the calculations actually tell you and the limitations of using decision trees. So I'm mostly going to focus on how to construct one, um, how to do the calculations and what those calculations mean. So a decision tree is a mathematical model used to help managers make decisions. It's all about using estimates and probabilities to try and calculate likely outcomes. So the idea behind this is it's a, it's a logical process for decision making. It's set out in a diagram that takes into account any time where a decision has to be made and where chance can determine the outcome. What I mean by that is if you make a decision, there's a chance it's going to go well, there's a chance it's not going to go well, and obviously when there's a chance that something is going to occur, whether that's success or failure, there's going to be a money value attached to that. So maybe if it's successful, it's going to return this amount of money. If it's not successful, it's going to return this amount of money. And maybe one of those is a profit, maybe one of those is a loss. In terms of when a business would use decision tree analysis, they might use them when there's going to be a sequence of events that will occur from any business decision. So when we think about a strategy, we're talking about a long-term plan. Some examples of these strategies or decisions could be, should we launch a new product? Should we enter a new market? Should we build a new factory? Should we either hire machinery or buy machinery? Or should we hire new staff or should we outsource? Anytime there's a decision, there's, there's going to be more than one option. And what Decision Tree basically does is it assigns values to those options and determines which one is probably the, the best option for them. So... In terms of step-by-step -step approach, uh, it's a diagram that looks a little bit like this, as you can see on the screen. The decision problem is set out left to right in the sequence order in which they occur. So it consists of two different types of action, basically. So a decision that has to be made, so those are shown by a square. So you see that that first blue square there, there's, there's three options for our decision. You can either launch in the current market, you can launch in the new market or you can do nothing. And remember, doing nothing is always an option for a business. And although it doesn't really seem like a strategy because you're not doing anything, you're not, ma you're not making any changes, sometimes that might actually be the best option if the other two options aren't profitable. So we've got those decisions that we have to make and that's something that we can control. And obviously we're gonna do a ton of research based on you know, our market research, what we know about the market, all those different other things that we're going to consider when we're making a decision. But ultimately, that's something that we can control. We'll use our research and we'll make a decision um, as a business in, in terms of which option we go with based on the, the findings of our, of our research. And that's going to be a combination of qualitative data such as something like this, but it's also going to be those qualitative factors as well. After we've made a decision, there's no guarantee it's going to go well. There's no guarantee it's going to work. So we have these chance events. For the ones for the two decisions that we've got as options, obviously if you do nothing, there's no there's no there's no chance of any outcome other than nothing, basically. But if we launch in a new market or we launch in a current market, there's a chance that that's gonna be successful and there's a chance that that's gonna fail. So you see where we've got success and failure, we've got numbers underneath, um, so 0 0.8 and 0 0.2. That effectively just represents the probability of those two actions happening. So 0 0.8 would suggest that there's an 80% chance of success. 0 0.2 would suggest there's a 20% chance of failure. And for our new market, we've got a 60% chance of success and a 40% chance of failure. Those probabilities, obviously they'd be given to you in an exam. Maybe they'd only give you the one. You won't be able to work out the other one because it has to add up to one. Obviously, there's a 100% chance of one of those two things happening. Those probabilities are going to be determined by market research as well. So I think it's fair to say that if you're launching in a current market, there's more chance of that being successful because chances are you've already got experience in that market. You know the market a little bit better. It's less risky. Whereas if you launch in a new market, there's obviously more risk because it's a new market for you. 
uh, there's a lot of more there's a lot more variables that perhaps aren't you know competition that maybe isn't a factor in the current market and things like that obviously but they would be given to you so you don't have to work those out for yourself you'll also see that there's some money figures attached so we've got our launch in current market that's going to cost us six million pounds and launching a new market is going to cost us eight million pounds that again those figures would be given to you as well there's nothing you have to come up with with for that and we've also got the value that the project would return if it's successful and if it's a failure so 13 million pounds if we launch in the current market and it's successful that's going to give us 13 million pounds and failure is going to return us 4 million pounds so obviously if it's a failure we make a loss whereas launching in the new market because it's a new market I've, i mean i've made these figures up but let's assume that you're going to return 18 million pounds if it's successful there's less chance of it being successful it's only a 60 percent chance um, instead of an 80% chance, but it is going to be more lucrative because it's a new market. Maybe there's maybe that's untapped consumers. Um, and if it's a failure, it's still going to return 8 million. So in this case, even if it's a failure, it still recovers the cost of launching in the new market in, in the first place. So you won't always just take the answer at face value. You have to consider those other, those other factors as well, um, such as, okay, well, is it going to be if it's a failure are we going to how much money are we going to lose that's obviously going to be a big factor for any business so it looks like this this is the example it's the same example from the other video so if you've already practiced it then that's fine if you'd like to have a go at doing it now and um, then just pause the video and have a go uh, i'm just going to run through the answers and explain how to how to calculate them there's two different parts there's two different things that we need to work out we need to work out our expected value and our net gain i'm going to put them in this table here uh, so we've got our three options we've got launching in the current market we've got launching in the new market and we've got doing nothing so the first thing we need to look at is our expected value now this is if we make that decision so if we decide to for example launch in the current market how much are we likely to return on average and the key thing with this is it's an it's an average because we're going to work out sort of a weighted average because there's 80 percent chance of us getting 13 million pounds and only 20 percent chance of us getting 4 million pounds in, so we're going to work out an average. We're never actually going to receive the average because if it's a failure, we're going to receive four million pounds. If it's a success, we're going to receive thirty million pounds. Those are the only two options. Those are the only two outcomes. But in terms of looking at comparing these two, because they have different levels of the different rates of success or likelihoods of success, we have to carry out a, a weighted average. So the way we do that is first of all, we're going to times our end value, so our thirty million pounds, by the probability and We'll do the same for 4 million times 0 0.2 and then we're going to add those together to get our expected value so that is going to give us for the three options that's going to give us uh, for the launch in the current market we've got 13 times 0 0.8 is 10.4 4 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.8 add those two together and we get 11.2 million pounds i've made a big i've made a point of putting 11.2 million pounds instead of just 11.2 because it's really important that you don't lose context of the unit that you're talking about um, it always frustrates me when I see an answer that's, for example, like a current ratio where they don't express it as a ratio. They just write the answer. Maybe it's like 1.4. It's 1.4 to 1. Or if you calculate a gross profit margin and people just write 47, it's 47%. You need to make sure you express the units. So I just think if you do that all the way through, it makes it much easier. It makes it much more likely that you won't forget. For launching in the new market, we've got 18 times 0 0.6 is 10.8. We've got eight times 0 0.4 is 3.2. If we add those together, we get 14 million pounds. So based on that, it looks like, and obviously for doing nothing, the expected value is zero pounds because we're not doing anything. So we're not going to return any money. Um, looking at those figures, you would say that launching in the new market is the best idea. But there is one thing that we haven't considered at this point, And that is that we haven't considered how much it's actually going to cost to go into that new market or to go into the current market. So that's where the net gain comes in. So it's really straightforward. All we do for our net gain is we subtract the initial cost, which is shown on the decision tree uh, just after the decision where we've got the six million pounds and the eight million pounds. They're obviously in brackets to suggest that they're costs. So 11.2 million minus six million is 5.2 million and 14 million minus eight million is six million. So obviously doing nothing, there's no cost and there's no return. So that's just gonna be zero pounds. From these two, this is where you really make your decision. So a four marker and a decision tree four marker might just say, calculate the expected values and net gains. It might not actually ask you to make any decision at all. You might just get one mark for doing each of those four calculations correctly. 
it might ask you to identify which option you think is based on this only the best option. Obviously, there might be a case study attached that might have more information in. There might be something about some external market condition in the new market that means that even though the net gain is higher, it's not the best idea because you know maybe the the risk is 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 quite higher or there's something the new you know an existing competitor is about to launch a new product as well that might change the level of success or the probability of success and failure. But a four market, the four markets I've seen in sort of the spec, the specimen papers and and stuff like that. They tend to suggest that calculating the expected value and the net gain uh, and then being able to identify which one is uh, the right option is the is all that you'd be required to do. So once we have identified which one we're going to go with, we're going to go with launching the new market because it returns a higher net gain. You just cross off the other two and that should be it. That should be all you need to do for a decision tree. If you've got any questions, just chuck them in the comments or find me on Twitter and ask. Um, Hope this was helpful.